All right, Crystal, what's on your radar? Well, as we reported yesterday, hashtag resistance hunk Justin Amash launched an exploratory committee that is actively considering running for president on the libertarian ticket. We asked Trump campaign spokesperson Mark Lauder about it yesterday, and he expressed more or less complete indifference. The president himself actually actively egged Amash on. Meanwhile, there was something approaching a complete meltdown within the MSNBC resistance set as they worried that his potential bid could hand the election to Trump. Trump. Fellow former GOP Never Trumper Joe Walsh penned this op-ed for The Washington Post arguing, quote, if Amash gets the Libertarian nomination and stays in until the end, he could wind up going in the books as the guy who voted to impeach Trump one year, then tipped the election to him 11 months later. George Conway, Rick Wilson, Bill Kristol, they all quickly jumped into the fray on Twitter to assure Justin that a third party run would almost certainly lead to a Trump re-election. Now, some did push back on the idea that Amash would necessarily take votes away from the Dems, given his extremely conservative libertarian ideology. And it is true that Justin Amash is the polar opposite of every policy that Democrats at least claim to support. He came in on the Tea Party wave and was one of the few who actually meant it. He is a Koch heritage style anti-government radical who not only opposes the sort of pro-worker economic populism, which frankly, we all know here that Democrats actively oppose, but he also stands in opposition to every single one of the cultural issues that Democrats have centered in the suburban remake of their party. He's He's opposed civil rights for gay Americans and designating lynching, lynching a federal hate crime. He's against even background checks for gun purchases and is vehemently anti-abortion. He literally stands for nothing that Dems claim to care about. But he is right on the only issue that actually counts for Dems in the Trump era, beating Donald Trump. This is what we saw play out in the Democratic primary after years of being fed the MSNBC propaganda that Trump is the end-all be-all of all of our problems. Like good little sheep, Democratic voters lined up behind the candidate that the media told them could win. They were ready to vote for almost literally anyone who was given that designation. Bloomberg would have been fine. Bernie would have been fine. Justin Amash would have been fine. And Biden certainly was fine in spite of his many manifest weaknesses, which are increasingly on display every day. And that all makes sense if the sum total of your politics really does boil down to Trump is bad and hashtag never Trump. So no accident that it was overwhelmingly the never Trumpers who were most certain and in my view, the most correct about what impact Amash's run would have on the vote totals because they are the contingent which understands best that the Democratic Party, with their assistance and guidance, has collapsed down to standing for one thing and one thing alone, opposition to Trump. If you're down with the program of criticizing literally everything Trump does whilst mind-numbingly carrying water for Biden and the Dem Party, you're in the club. If you dare dissent from that view, or God forbid, hold any principles that conflict with that view, like, say, Medicare for All, or the Green New Deal, or, you know, not voting for those credibly accused of sexual assault, then you are most definitely not in the club. In the Trump era, symbolic gestures of resistance and hand-wringing about norms are really all that the party has come to stand for. Norm concern trolling and Trump derangement syndrome is what unites Nicole Wallace, David Frum, and Joe Scarborough with Elizabeth Warren, Rachel Maddow, and Kamala Harris in one happy family. And actually, the fact that Amash doesn't see himself in the same ideological grouping as Elizabeth Warren, it at least shows he's got some principles that extend beyond Trump bad. In fact, he had a great tweet about this. He said, the visceral outrage of many partisans to giving Americans an additional choice on the ballot speaks volumes about the ugly, hyper-partisan nature of politics today. This is precisely the mindset that needs to be challenged and why this campaign is so critical. Man has a point. So good on him. If he wants to offer voters an alternative in a different ideological lane, unfortunately for him, as we've covered here, libertarianism is quite literally the least popular ideology in the country, and I certainly <laughs> won't be voting for him, but that's fine, not a problem. The truth is, if Democrats want to win the election, they should probably worry more about appealing to voters and less about the spoilers who would dare to steal their voters. Because guess what, guys? No one is your voter. You gotta earn it. So maybe try actually standing for something. Do you really wanna run on the slogan of slightly less incompetent, corrupt, and rude than Trump? It's your choice. But frankly, if you go down that path, you'll probably have bigger problems than Justin Amash. Like Jesse Ventura, for example, or, you know, those pesky voters looking for an actual reason to go out and vote. So the next time that someone from the hashtag resistance side trolls you for not bending the knee to Joe Biden, you can tell them that you are 
absolutely going to vote for the party that gives them a moral, courageous, clear alternative to Trump. Just don't hold your breath for that alternative to be the mainstream Democratic Party. I thought that this was so telling. I mean, first yeah. of all, by their logic, if Donald Trump is so egregiously awful and so obviously terrible, why would you be worried about Justin Amash, who most Americans, if you ask them, I'm sure they don't even know who he, have no idea is. Who he is. Like, if you're this threatened yeah. by Justin Amash or by me for, or, you know, a, a, another Bernie person, mm -hmm. like, what are you doing? Judging by your own rhetoric, you should be de beating Donald Trump by 10, 15, 20 points. Yeah, but they're not. And they know that's this shows their fundamental insecurity. And you pointed at something perfect, which is that. Amash is not, Amash support, Amashism, all of that, it's not ideological. Nobody wants what Justin Amash is selling. <laughs> Nobody wants libertarianism. What they do want is the MSNBC and CNN grift that Amash has been on a campaign for now for a couple of years, which is tweeting about the Mueller report, voting for Trump's impeachment, leaving the Republican Party. By the way, he's only doing this because he can't even win his own home district because he's getting challenged. And it was clear that he was obviously going to go down and lose. He has no alignment with the even voters who put him into office. This demonstrates perfectly, as you said, the Democratic Party is becoming a they, they claim to stand for many, many things. What they really stand for is the Rachel Maddow hour on MSNBC, which is Russiagate grifting opposition to Trump at all costs with ludicrous stories and different ideas. And that's what Amash is. He became a resistance hero. That's who Tom Nichols is. That's who David Frum is. That's who met George Conway. I mean, all these ridiculous figures who have no relevance in their party that they claim to come from. Yeah. And now they're coming and imposing the terrible ideas that got the Republican Party to where it was right. that Trump could take it over onto the Democrats. Well, and look, I give Amash some credit here because he's basically separating himself and saying, no, guys, like, yeah, we were aligned on this one issue, but I, I actually have principles. Like, I'm not like an Elizabeth Warren type of a candidate. And I think, like, they were so stunned by that because in their mind, there is one issue and one issue alone. And we saw this last night on MSNBC. Chris Hayes, oh. what did he dare to do? He dared to actually cover the allegations of Tara Reid against Joe Biden. And guess what happened? People lost yeah. their mind. Got blown out for it. Lost, yeah. I mean, Chris Hayes was turning on Twitter. That people are calling for him to get fired. Think about the insanity of that. Like that you can't even dissent in covering a news story mm -hmm. that is like a major, you know, major allegation against the Democratic Party presumptive nominee and the fact that you even talk about that in a remotely honest way, and by the way, way too late, yeah. that that would cause people to be so triggered that they're calling for you to be fired. I mean, these people have really lost their minds. Yeah, they've lost it. I mean, look, they can't handle any dissent, it's, literally. It's not, a, Chris Hayes isn't a hero for covering this. We interviewed Tara Reid 34 days ago, <laughs> more than a month ago. I mean, she came forward, literally, I think, what, 35 days, almost over a month. And that's yeah. how long it's been out in the public domain, and it gets its first mention on Chris Hayes' show. That's pretty I ridiculous. mean, and like, I want to give him credit, but it's no. also embarrassing. And yeah. also, by the way, you know, Tara, uh, any of these outlets could reach out to Tara. Mm -hmm. You know, she's uh, she's willing to do some interviews, not that she's going to oh, yeah. respond to every we'll talk request. About that Smith, yeah, we're going to talk to the, yeah. I mean, but I just think that the fact that they are so upset that you would even talk about a story shows the like the sort of authoritarian mindset that is set in within the Democratic Party that is just so reflexively opposed to anything that could be even slightly negative for the Democratic Party. And it's it's a very, very unhealthy and ultimately even if like for their goals of winning and having power and getting Donald Trump out of office, it's ultimately not helpful. Yeah, couldn't agree more. All right. Former Sanders campaign national co-chair Nina Turner. She joins us next with her thoughts on the New York primary.